Hey folks, it's Pat here. Um, got a chapter 11 question that I want to cover in some detail here. And that's uh, this one, hypothesis test for the difference of population means, z-test. Now, when you get to chapter 11 and don't touch these problems until you've done all the ones in chapter 10, um, sometimes I think Alex will unlock one or two of these for you. It's just, they're, they're not that hard. They're just really tedious and they take a lot of um, kind of like painstaking attention. Okay, but with these problems, what we're doing is we're doing the same stuff that we were doing in chapter 10. Rather than comparing a population uh, sample or a sample to a population mean, though, we're going to compare two samples from two different populations um, in order to make inferences about the differences between the populations themselves. And so it adds an extra layer onto what you're doing in chapter 10. And um, the math behind these is 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 not. I mean, it's it's not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It's just not fun. There are so many different ways to make mistakes on these. And so this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it um, the long way. But understand that you can still use that math cracker site, and I'll show you how to do that here as well. All right. And so that that's probably gonna be easier. And quite honestly, I, I prefer that you do them that way, just so you don't get too frustrated with these. Because quite honestly, um, there are a lot of opportunities to make mistakes in the math. But if you don't have access to the site or if you want to challenge yourself, I'll show you how to do them the long way as well. So let's start with this one. So the first one that you should tackle is these ones with the Z test, all right, because it's the most straightforward. Um, and of course, Z test is where they give us the population means. Now, in this problem here, yes, you do have to read all this junk. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, a statistic from one population sample or from a sample from a, one population. Compare it um, with the statistic from a sample from the second population, and then uh, use that to actually um, make it or establish a claim, or or, or no, we can't actually uh, support that claim. All right. So, like everything else in chapter ten, pick out your null and alternative hypothesis. So start with your alternate hypothesis, whatever the claim is. In that case, um, it's right here at the .05 level of significance. Is there enough evidence to support the claim? The claim that life expectancy mu one, so population one in Germany, so this relates to Germany, is greater than the life expectancy mu two. All right, so the mean life expectancy of population two, which is the United States. Okay, so the way you write these is you write them out as um, statements like this, and so. Um, we think that the population life expectancy in Germany is greater, so it's mu1, so use this little subscript guy right here, minus mu2, okay, would be greater than zero, okay? So we write this out as an equation like this. So if Germany's population's um, mean population is higher than that of the United States, of course, when we subtract the United States from Germany, it'd be greater than zero. So these are always going to be the like greater than zero, less than zero, or equals, or does not equal zero if it's a two-tailed test. This is a one-tailed test, so of course it's going to be greater than or less than. And in this case, we think that Germany has a larger population than the United States, so when we subtract the two, it would be greater than zero. Okay, so our null hypothesis is just the um, opposite of that, and so we need to cover all our bases, so greater than or less than or equal to zero, okay? So for these, you're going to use the Z statistic because it tells you that right up here, and also because we know the population standard deviation. Now, here's the hard part, calculating the value of the test statistic, okay? This takes some effort because this <laughs> right here, this monster right here is the equation that you need to do um, in order to calculate that test statistic. So Z basically equals the sample mean of population one minus the sample mean of our second population from our second population all together minus okay our um, population mean for one and our population mean for two the difference between those two now the problem doesn't give us these so these actually fortunately in these ones balance you know they they we re we just set those to zero okay but then that all over the square root of our population standard deviation squared, which is the same thing as what that's variance, okay, of population one over the sample size of one plus variance of population two over the sample size of two. And that's just, it's a lot to do, okay? So if you're gonna do these by hand, what I do is I write myself out a shopping list like this, 
all right, where I need mean of sample one, mean of sam or mean of population one, mean of population two, and then the standard deviation of population one, standard deviation of population two, sample size of one, sample size of two, and then of course the mu, we don't know the population means for either one of these, so those are set to zero. So these are kind of easy, but you gotta pick out these other six. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now this problem here, uh, yep, write them down, <laughs> okay. And so X bar of one, all right, so that's our sample mean from that we pulled from the United States. All right, so go through, or no, that's Germany, sorry. Germany, don't get these screwed up. So Germany, all right, so uh, 235 individuals lived an average of 777.9 years, okay? And then they had a standard deviation of 5.4 years, so that's mu one, and then the sample size was 235. For Germany 235 okay and so that's my X bar one uh, I'm sorry my X bar one my mu one and my n one okay and then so now let's do the same thing for the United States which is uh, here's the United States uh, 260 individuals 76.6 years 76.6 years and then their standard deviation was 6.9 years 6.9 years and then, of course, the sample size on those was 260, okay? So that's all the information that we need. Now we just need to plug it into this monstrous equation here, okay? And so let's go ahead and do that in the Alex calculator, all right? Be very careful how you do this, but just start with that um, uh, sample, size, sample mean one, which is Germany, 77.9 years, minus sample size, uh, sample mean of number two, which is the United States, 76.6 years. And then um, if we had the population means, we would subtract those out, but we don't have those out, so we can just ignore that right here. So take all that, divide it by um, the square root of sigma one, which is, um, oh, I put those in the wrong spot. Anyway, that's okay. Sigma one is uh, 5.4 years, and actually you want to do this in parentheses 5.4 and parentheses and then you're going to square that and the reason why you're going to square that is because 5.4 is the standard deviation square that to get the variance okay and then that's all over 235 which is the end give me a right arrow key and add and let's do it again for the united states so the united states standard deviation was 6.9 okay square that so we get the variance and then divide all of that by 260, which is our sample size, okay? And that, the whole thing fits in there like that, okay? So hit enter, and we get our Z statistic right there, which is 2.345, all right? So this wants us to use the p-value, so we're looking for something that's greater than. So in order to get the p-value of this, we can just plug it into this calculator directly here. Oh, snap, sorry, backwards. Um, so undo. Whenever you get one that's dot nine nine, you did it backwards, and so now we need to look for the complement of that. So you can just use the complement rule, subtract it from one. There's our p-value right there. 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0. There we go. Okay, round to three. And so it's asking us, at the 0.05 level of significance, is there enough evidence? So 0.01 is way less than 0.05, so yes, we can. All right, so um, let's check that real quick here. And we got that one correct. So a lot of work, so to do it this way, but you can do it, you can totally do it. Um, it just takes a little bit of patience and um, a little bit of tricky work in the calculator. But that's how you calculate the Z statistic when you're actually comparing two different means. Now, um, what most of you should do, all right, is head on over to that website in the module three folder and Blackboard hypothesis testing and pull up this test here which is z-test for two means with a known population standard deviation. If you can't find that, it's in the z-test calculators right here on MathCracker, okay? Make sure you punch in all the information off your shopping list, all right? Which is all this stuff on here, okay? Because you're gonna need to put in your hypotheses in there. Make sure you get the signs correct. Okay, let's check that. Yep, okay, got them in there correctly. And then this will be all the information for your first population, including the mean, the standard deviation, the sample size. In this case, that's all the stuff for Germany. 
And this one right here will be population two, sample mean, population standard deviation, and sample size, in this case for the United States. Punch in your significance level, hit solve, and bam, you get all your answers down here, exactly the same way that you did in chapter 10, okay? This can make life significantly easier for you in chapter 11, so please use this website. Totally okay with me, <laughs> all right? And, um, you know, because honestly, if you're pulling out the correct information, you're going to get the right answers, and you're not going to screw up the math on this part, which I care less about that than I do that you know what you're looking at, okay? And so right here, of course, is our um, cutoff value. So if it asks you to use the, um, um, the cutoff method, here's your cutoff value. Here's your test statistic. All that calculation that we did is done in a heartbeat way faster and with less chance for error. And of course, we got a, um, a Z stat there of 2.345. And if we go back, that's the exact same thing that we got using the equation, okay? And then finally, it'll give you both your, um, your conclusion using the cutoff value and using your p-value. And so there's our p-value right there, which we calculated right here. Of course, we rounded it up one. This one's to four spaces, or to out to four, so you just have to round it up. Um, by one, all right, in order to get it down to three decimals. Or you could plug that in. I, I bet you Alex would take it, okay? So I hope that helps with these problems. All of these are the same. Um, so just pay attention to which direction the sign is going in here and also pay attention to whether or not it's asking you for the crit value or the p-value. And finally, if you run into those two-tailed tests, just remember it's equals does not equal on these ones. And, um, you know, just follow the rules that you learned in Chapter 10. You'll be just fine on this one along with the other ones in Chapter 11. So, and we'll see you for videos on those shortly. <laughs>